I'm going to start right here. This is a French style bayonet from 1842. The reason I know it's uh, from 1842 and not 1840, they both have the same kind of cross guard, but the 1840 style had uh, bronze cross guard, and the 1842 has an iron cross guard. And since my magnet sticks to it, that tells me this is 1842. So there's a couple older bayonets here. I don't know a lot about bayonets, so I mean, I wish I could tell you more about it. I think I tried to look up some information on them one time. Uh, this one, I believe, is from the World War I era, and the other one, I don't have a clue. So if it looks familiar to you, you can uh, let me know what time period you think it's from. So there's a side view of that. And there's a full view of that one. And there's some markings on it. I'll try to get that. There we go. 4, 14, 19. Ah, I can't tell what that says. So I'm just going to continue going left to right here. Uh, this, I had to look it up. Uh, my brother found this. Um... He found it, it had a few arrowheads with it. Uh, we looked it up. This is called a rat tail spud. It's a pretty rare Indian artifact, believed to be used in uh, ceremonial uses. So, we're going to have that sent off and checked and uh, authenticated to see if they can tell us whether it's real or fake. We did find some real arrowheads with it, but I have no clue where they're at. So, yeah, sorry. I guess you guys have to get over that. Um, Here's a very unique piece of pottery. I actually think I found this piece of pottery whenever I was a, a teenager and he just kept it. And uh, so you see the unique designs on that pottery. Pretty neat. What we have here that I found also is a very old Bible, including the Apocrypha. So you can see a date right there. Yeah, 1829. Pretty interesting. I read some of it. Uh, the first book we got here is the first book of Moses called Genesis. I've got some swords here. Most of them are just cheap, China made. Uh, nothing real special. This is pretty neat. This sword has some Spanish writing on it, I do believe. Me and my wife looked it up. Basically, uh, what it means in a nutshell is, if you see me shining, prepare to die a good death. Something along those lines. If you speak Spanish, I'm sorry if I butchered that, but you know, you can let me know. And we have a really dull katana over here. And I had a bunch of knives, probably got maybe 150 knives from him, some old timers, uh, some other quality brands, but most of them are just cheap China China junk. I move over here, there's a few shark teeth. There's a shark tooth necklace with some random shark teeth. Here's some old coins. This is an 1827. I doubt you can see the date on it. It's just about completely worn off. 1827 capped bust dime. So, and over here we have a lot of V nickels, no special dates, a lot of older nickels. There's one silver nickel from uh, Philadelphia, 1945. Uh, there's some silver dimes, uh, a couple of them from 1964, and some silver quarters couple Indian head pennies not sure I can get the date on here yeah there it is 1897 and 1890 along with this large cent 1840 which has got a little bit of a dent in it this is a coin from Great Britain I'm uh, not sure what it's called, maybe a four pence or something like that. I'm not really educated on foreign coins, so anyway, pretty neat. Uh, I think I said the date was 1842. 
Yeah, it says there at the bottom, 1842. Uh, here's a mercury dime. There's a couple mercury dimes. No great key dates on them. Uh, some old wheat pennies. No great key dates on those either. And if I remember correctly, this is, let's see, what is this, 18, 1838. Not sure if this is a dime or a half dime. It's been a long time since I collected coins, since I was a teenager. But I think they call it a sitting liberty or something like that. I don't know. Y'all can correct me if you want. Here we have this really old picture, which has no dates or anything on it. Of a family of children that, you know, well, they didn't smile in pictures back then, so I guess that's normal. Doesn't necessarily mean they're unhappy. All it has on it is this marking. Uh, here's some really old coupons that I found in a, a pretty ancient magazine. Uh, most of the magazines I, I don't have out here. I can't even remember what I've done with them. But anyways, don't know if this represents two and a half cents or what it is on these coupons. But these were the best. I had several of them, but some of them were falling apart. So I get the best looking coupons out here. And... If y'all like to read all that stuff, there you go. You can pause it and read it all day. Moving on, I have this Central Pacific Railroad pea cup. Yeah, makes you feel good about holding it whenever you know lots of people's been um, urinating in this over the last several years. Notice to passengers, do not empty this chamber pot out of your train window because you might get urine on the person behind you. Pretty neat. I had a whole bunch of foreign coins that I got there. I looked up some of them. A lot of these are tokens. These are just wheat pennies. There's probably 150 or 200, 300, 400, I don't know. There's a lot of wheat pennies here. No key dates, they're all between 1940 and 1958, I do believe. Something along them lines. And there's no steel ones, there's actually only one 1943. And the only reason they left that steel penny in there is because it's so rusted you couldn't tell it was a steel penny. Alright, we do have some foreign money here from the Japanese government. Japanese government. There we go, there's a the back of it. Almost look like an old American $10 bill. And here's these two. Not sure where they're from. I may have looked it up at one point. But now I have no clue. So, that one's a 10 as well. Uh, it does have a date on it right there from 1944. Yeah, Dutchland. And this one here had a date on it as well. If I there, 1938. On that money. Unfortunately, they're all damaged because they were all stapled to each other. There's no date on this one. So if anybody knows, y'all can leave in the comments how old this money is. Because I haven't a clue. 1943. On that one. <clears throat> this one is a 10 francs and I don't believe it has a date on it not that I'm seeing yep anyways there's that I don't see a date on that one anywhere and you know how those French people like their art I think it's got a 20 on it in the top corner right up there yeah it's hard to see because of the staple and next we move on to this one that's got a 10 on it. Yeah, this, it says 10 shillings right there. Other than that, I really don't know much about much of this old money. And I don't see a date on this one anywhere. So. And last and probably least, should I say, is this thing. Not sure what it is. Made out of real crystals I believe and yeah there's that odd little thing my wife calls this the decorated turd so 
to see if it's authentic or not. If it is, it's probably the most expensive item that we have here. And I think they run for about four or five thousand dollars. So I'll give y'all an update and let you know if it's real or not. So I melted this styrofoam so that will sit safely right in there. So I already got fragile road on it. I want to make sure they don't break this bad boy. And it says do not cut with a knife. So I need to fix that real quick. Make sure they know what they're doing. There we go. Cut with chainsaw instead. I'd hate for them to make a mistake and damage this thing. So. Okay, so here's an update for you guys. Um, uh, we sent this off to Jerry Dickey in Middle Tennessee. He, we finally got it back. He kept it a couple weeks. And um, so I had already talked to him and I opened it up just to see what kind of paperwork is in there. And I'm going to share this with you all. It says, Ryan, I would give this a no possibility of being ancient. Signed, J.T. Dickey. Okay. Yeah, it was a good try, but maybe next time. Thank you all for joining us. Later.